Hello. Welcome back to the Foolish Bailey channel. May I just say real quick, the Foolish Baseball channel has a new upload. Chris Davis Baseball Bits right there, if you haven't seen it. But today on Foolish Bailey, I'm going to be watching a segment that aired on MLB Network earlier this week. And this segment caused a pretty big stir, especially online. So we're going to we're gonna watch it, and I'll just go ahead and say this segment makes some pretty big assertions about the game in 2021. And if the thesis of this segment is indeed correct, um, you know, it would really just change the way we view the game of baseball right now. So it's a big deal segment titled, Are Pitchers Really Throwing Harder Than Ever? It's kind of repetitive, but we're going to watch a little bit of it just to kind of get the gist of what we're learning about here and what we're talking about. But Bill, you say, oh, wait a minute, let's look a bit <coughs> deeper. Is that not the case? Well, I do want to look deeper at it. Okay, we're doing velocity through the years. And basically, what's going to happen is Billy Ripken here, who's really kind of leading the charge on this, Ron Darling, kind of the yes man here, is going to walk us through, you know, the hardest throwing pitchers of today compared to the hardest throwing pitchers of, you know, 20 or 30 years ago. And it's a video analysis that's very important. So let's do some video analysis here on MLB Network. Freeze that for me. So what we're trying to do, mm. and, and my girl back in edit, Alex, she's got no agenda here. Okay. I told her to match it up. No agenda. When the release point. She's not from Boston or New York. No, she's okay. got no agenda here. She's doing what she. No agenda. She's doing her video thing, and we're going to let this go. What do you got? Wow, I love it. They're right at the same point. It, it is amazing how these guys all sync up, even though they might start a little bit different. But let's play this thing forward and keep an eye towards the catcher's glove. Actually, Pedro's hit the glove a little bit sooner at 97 instead of 99. Okay, so two videos split screen, one of Pedro Martinez throwing 97, according to the radar gun, and then DeGrom throwing 99. You put those two side by side. And it looks like they're throwing the same velocity, or even, as I think Billy Ripken just said, that Pedro is actually throwing harder, that his ball is reaching the glove first. All right, let's keep watching. Now, Garrett Cole in the big unit. There's 98 and 94. Once again, freeze that for me. They're both getting ready to go. So once again, these guys all get kind wow. of in the similar position, right? And play this slow and then freeze it about the catcher's glove. One's 98 right. over here. Going frame the release by point frame. was supposedly the same. And big units balls. Wow. In so Randy Johnson throwing 94. That's just like Cole throwing, was it 98? What did they have? Not yet. 94, 98 miles per hour. So despite what the radar guns are telling us, guys, despite what StatCast is telling us, you know, Randy Johnson and Garrett Cole, they throw just as hard, even if there's a mile per hour difference. 94 once again i'm not saying guys don't throw hard today this one was interesting okay. to me because when you stop mike bucina versus shohei otani 95 versus 91 okay look at that they almost synced up again right it's almost identical wow. this one's gonna be 91 and this one's 94 play it through oh oh a picture's worth it's a thousand thing. words i think same a video thing. can be you've convinced me billy ripken mike bucina definitely throws as hard as shohei otani Okay, so the first and probably the biggest problem with this segment is the limitations of video. So for example, you know, this is the pitch that Pedro Martinez threw that Billy Ripken showed during the segment. This is during the 1999 All-Star break, which was broadcast on Fox. And like pretty much everything that was broadcast on US TV at the time, it's at 29.97 frames per second. So, you know, we can round that up. This is a 30 frame per second video. We're just gonna go frame by frame here Let's say this right here, frame 18. Let's say frame 18 is where Pedro releases the baseball. And so it's in the air, it's going, it's going, and right there. I'm going to actually say it's in the catcher's mitt right here instead of right here. So we're going to say right here at frame 31, it's in. So the ball travels, you know, approximately 60 feet in 13 frames. We'll learn later that it doesn't actually travel 60 feet. Spoiler alert, but... Just for the sake of, you know, getting in the mind of a Billy Ripken, 13 frames. That's the that's the measure of Pedro Martinez's 97 miles per hour fastball. You can start to see a problem if you math it out because if you take, you know, the length from the mound 
to home plate, right? So 60 and a half feet, 60 feet, six inches. We know that we divide it by 13 frames. That's how many feet, you know, very loosely approximated the ball travels. It travels almost, you know, five feet per frame. So as the ball moves through the air, we get 13 snapshots, okay? We get 13 pieces of information to help us track the ball through the air from Pedro's hand to the catcher's glove. And because we only get 13, that means that within any given frame, or should I say between any given frame, the ball could move five feet. So that's like the margin of error here. It's five feet. So imagine, you know, a side-by-side -side comparison where the ball is smacking the catcher's mitt in one frame and then it's five feet away from the catcher's glove, those pitches could be going the same speed, <laughs> okay? So we're talking about, you know, in this comparison specifically, a two miles per hour difference, but clearly, due to the 30 FPS video, the margin of error here is just huge. It's just huge, it's like five feet. To put it in a slightly different way, you know, imagine a ball thrown 100 miles per hour, but we only get 13 snapshots. We only get 13 snapshots to try to be that precise to measure the ball at 100 miles per hour. So, you know, let's say we do a little math like this, 12 divided by 13. So let's say if we were like off by one frame or within one frame, that basically means that a 92 mile per hour fastball and a 100 mile per hour fastball could look like they're going the exact same speed at 30 frames per second. You see the problem when you're comparing 99 to 97, and I'm telling you, you know, just based on this Pedro video, what I've seen of it, I'm telling you that 100 could look like 92 if you go frame by frame at 30 FPS. Again, when you're talking about a two mile per hour gap, I'm really not surprised that frame by frame they look the same. By the way, I don't know if that math is like 100% accurate, but the point still stands. There's a huge margin of error when you're talking about video. And if there wasn't, you could honestly look at this video of Bob Gibson and tell me, you know, with stunning accuracy, apparently, how hard he's throwing. You could tell me with stunning accuracy if what Billy Ripken says is true. This one's really good already. This is Cole versus Randy Johnson. And what's happening here, and I'll blow up the image just so y'all can see a little bit better. Already on this split screen, it looks like Randy Johnson has already thrown the ball. It looks like the ball has left his hand, and it looks like it hasn't for Cole. So already it looks like there's a sink problem right here because it looks like Randy Johnson's already thrown the ball, and Cole hasn't. And even then, you know, keep in mind the frame rate of these videos. Let's, let's go back just a few frames if we can, maybe one frame on that. So if you go back one frame on that, look at Cole's arm. What is Cole's arm doing? You know, is it, is it up here? Is it up here? You know, you can't tell. It's just a blur, you know, and that sort of just shows these guys are doing big movements in between frames that when you watch in real time, you know, it's fine. But when you're looking at 30 frames per second, even 60 frames per second, it's just so imprecise. And if you're going to be off by like one frame, like I think this split screen sync is, you know, you might as well be making 100 look like 84, you know. So when you watch this side by side, clearly the synchronization is off. And I think that's, you know, that's accidental. I don't think there's any malice behind that. It's easy to mess that up and be off by one frame. But if you're off by one frame, you know, it makes a big difference as we've already learned. But clearly, Randy Johnson letting go of the ball before Cole does. And that just invalidates the whole comparison. Cole versus Randy Johnson is also really good because this whole segment just doesn't talk about extension and extension is going to make a huge difference whenever you're comparing two pitchers side by side and what i mean by that is look at these guys they're standing on a rubber both of them that is 60 feet six inches from home plate okay that much is uniform but they don't throw the ball 60 feet six inches they take a big step off the rubber and then they throw okay so that really the distance that the ball travels from the pitcher's hand to home plate is usually around like 54 feet in actuality, but the extension that they get varies, you know, depending on which pitcher you are and what your motion looks like, and especially how tall you are. Look at Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson was measured, according to baseball reference, at 6'10". Garrett Cole, 6'4". So already Randy Johnson is six inches taller than Garrett Cole. We don't know how long his arms were, but it's very much possible that Randy Johnson throwing 94 and Garrett Cole throwing, I think, 98 in this video, 
could have taken the same amount of time, but that might just be because Randy Johnson is throwing the ball a shorter distance than Garrett Cole. Here's a really good example, albeit an extreme one. Tyler Glass now. He's six foot eight. He's very tall. He's like Randy Johnson. Um, huge extension guy. Huge extension guy. His extension this year, let's look at his fastball, 7.4 feet. So he's throwing the ball. It's leaving his hand 7.4 feet in front of the rubber. You look at a short pitcher like Marcus Stroman, 5'7". You know, huge difference, I know. This is not the same height gap as between Cole and Randy Johnson. But when he throws his sinker, 5.9 feet. So the difference already is 18 inches, even if they're throwing at the same velocity. Not to mention, it's 30 FPS video of Randy Johnson, you know. We can't even get precise enough to get within, you know, three or four feet confidently. And then already with this extension business, we're adding, you know, a foot and a half potentially of difference. So extension, video frame rate, not syncing the video properly in the first place. I would say these are the three main problems with this segment. If you don't believe what I'm talking about, I have a little magic trick for you. So check this out. This is going to really blow your mind. If you thought that Billy Ripken segment was cool, this is going to drive you wild. Okay, uh, pretend I'm Billy Ripken. All right, here on the left, we have Tyler Glass now. Here on the right, we have Marcus Stroman. This is from the same year, same Hawkeye measuring system for the velocity, and watch this. Now let's pause it right there, Alex. Pause it right there, Alex. See how they're at the same point in their delivery? See how similar that looks? See how beautifully synced up that is right there? Let's watch what happens. Look at that. Look at that. Just watch it. Watch the ball go into the gloves. Watch the ball go into the gloves. Same velocity. Once you break down the speed, same velocity. But what? But what? Look at this. Glass now, 97. Stroman, 85. I guess 97 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour are the same. I'll just go up to a big league hitter tomorrow and tell them, hey, actually, you idiot, there's no difference between 97 and 85 miles per hour. I broke it down on the video on MLB Network. Gosh. So what happened there is I just made all the same mistakes as they did during that segment. You know, I was uncharitable with the video frame rate. I took 60 FPS, which is imprecise, bumped it down to 30 FPS, which is super imprecise. You know, I was uncharitable about the pictures I used, you know, relative to their extension. Glass now, of course, with far greater extension. And then I was uncharitable about the synchronization itself. I think I had Glass now, you know, realistically probably a frame behind Strowman. I commit all those three sins, all those three mistakes, and I've basically proven that 97 and 85, there's no difference. You know, there is no difference between 97 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour if you make all the same mistakes that MLB Network just did. And so if I'm able to make Tyler Glassdown's 97 mile per hour fastball look like Marcus Stroman's 85 mile per hour slider, it's going to be pretty easy for them to make, you know, Shohei Otani's 95 look like Mike Mussina's 91. It's just completely inaccurate. Now, I don't really think this segment has like a super malicious edge to it. You know, I don't think Billy Ripken sitting back there in the video room like, yes, come on, let's deceive these people. Let's lie to the viewers of MLB Network. But this comment at the beginning of it really actually set me off when I heard it for the first time. So let's watch that. And I think this stem, Ron, when people were talking about, okay, the averages were way down. And they were because of the high velocity, high velocity. Right. And I think it has as much to do with the approach at home plate than it does the velocity. So I'd like to. Just give me a second real quick. Oh, man, dude. Come on, dude. Come on. He's not wrong that modern hitters, like, aren't taking a batting average-centric approach. You know, they're focused on, on base. They're focused on slugging. You know, they're not really caring about batting average the same way they cared when Billy Ripken played. But to downplay the effect of velocity on batting average is, it's just a hateful thing to do. And what I think really makes it hateful is that it implies that if the pitchers today are truly throwing at the same velocity as the pitchers 30 years ago— but the batting averages are worse, and the strikeouts are higher. That means that the hitters of today aren't just not better, they're worse. That means baseball is getting worse. That means the hitters are worse today than they were 30 years ago. 
and that's just a historical. The history of sports is that the athletes get better. And I know the Olympics are on right now, so let's look at it. 1998 is when you know Billy Ripken retired. In 1998, the record for the women's 100-meter freestyle, 54 seconds. Right now, 51.7. That's huge. That's huge. That's 2.3 seconds. Here's the deadlift. When Billy Ripken retired, 931 pounds. Right now, 1,105 pounds. Marathon, we've gone from... Two hours, six minutes to two hours, one minute and 39 seconds. The best athletes just get better. And honestly, if you can't like get over that as a former player, then why are you in punditry? You know, if you're going to be just self-conscious about that, why are you talking about these guys? Here's the average four-seam fastball velocity just within the pitch tracking era. So this starts in 2008. That's 10 years after Billy Ripken retires. So in the last 13 years, we've come from 91.9 miles per hour to 93.7. So two miles per hour have been added as tracked in the pitch tracking era alone. And this reveals just another big problem, which is that, you know, we're comparing the cream of the crop to the cream of the crop. You know, we're comparing DeGrom to Pedro for Pete's sakes. These people are superhumans. But if you look at the average pitcher over the last 20 or 30 years, that's really where the gap is going to be found because the average pitcher is just so much better today than 20 or 30 years ago. And that's just an absolute fact. You know, and back in the day when Billy Ripken played, there might have been, you know, one or two guys in the league that could throw a 100 mile per hour fastball. Now there's like one or two guys in every organization that can. It's crazy. 44 pitchers in the big leagues this year have thrown a pitch 100 miles per hour or higher. And we're talking about, just choke up on the bat. Just choke up on the bat. There's no difference between 195, according to my video. Get out of here, man. That's just crap. And look, if this was on ESPN or something like that, it wouldn't be as bad. But this is on MLB Network. This is on the league-branded network. This is on the network that is made to promote MLB and its stars. And basically what this segment is saying, hey, you know those guys that are amazing? Cole, Otani, DeGrom, you know those pitchers that are changing the game? They're not that great. They're not that great. That's the message of this segment to me. And that is just, he's just being a hater. You're just being a hater. You know, acknowledge the fact that they throw less pitches or less innings per start. Fine by me. Acknowledge the role of the bullpen. Fine by me. But to just to come out there and be like, actually, Mike Busina, Shohei Otani, same velocity. It's just, it's lying. And you know, this segment was like widely panned in like the internet nerd baseball circles. But if you were just, you know, up late one night watching MLB Network and you tuned in and watched this segment, you were basically lied to. You know, you were led astray and you were made to believe that Shohei Otani, you know, Garrett Cole, and Jacob deGrom really aren't as great as you think they are. And I just think that's really sad. And it also, you know, gasses up, you know, former big leaguers like Jeff Fry, who have a very sort of like old school view of the game, very batting average centric. And he says, you know, very interesting. I've been saying the guns are juice and here's the evidence. I don't think Jeff Fry really believes that. I think Jeff Fry is just quote tweeting this because it suits his narrative of the game. I don't think he's a dumb guy. In fact, I think he's a very smart guy. But it still sort of shows how this like misinformation can be weaponized. So I hope, you know, if anyone watched this segment and believed a lick of it, I hope that they also, you know, see this video and understand why it's just completely untrue. One last thought before I blow a gasket. You know, there's no reason. There's no reason for, you know, the Ron Darling, Yes Man, the Billy Ripken, the Jeff Fries of the world, you know, the former players who played 20, 30 years ago to be jealous. You know, there's no reason for them to be jealous. Even if today's pitchers throw harder, it's because of better nutrition, better understanding of the game, you know, better equipment, better playing surfaces. And that's just kind of how it goes. These guys aren't naturally better, okay? They weren't born throwing 95 miles per hour. That's not how this works. Baseball is a skill sport. And they've reached this point because of the hard work and the progress made by players who played all throughout history. And so because of that, there's no reason for this jealousy, in my mind. You know, this is why we compare players to their peers. This is why we compare players to who they played against at the time. Because again, if you get Babe Ruth in that time machine from 1927 and you bring him to today, he never saw a slider. He never saw a slider in his life. He never saw 98 miles per hour in his life. He stinks. So there's no need to do this. There's just no need for this. No one asked for this. Stop doing this.